Hello again, everyone. Melth back again with what may be the world's first no-cheese, no-hit guide to one of the toughest foes in the whole Souls series. These games have some of the best fights against dragons in video game history, and also some of the worst, including Hellkite, the Bridge Wyvern, this guy. He's so dangerous and so annoying to fight that most people either 1. skip him entirely, 2. cheese him with one of the several ways to exploit his frankly terrible AI, or 3. just come back with endgame quality weapons and or flash sweat and brute force him, killing him before he can kill you. But if you're like me, that's deeply unsatisfying. And you want to tackle him in a fair fight with the developers intended, with precise timing and rolling and taking no hits. This guide is for you. Let me dispel one myth first. A lot of people think that Hellkite Dragon regenerates his health, and is therefore impossible to kill with weak weapons. That is false. He has no passive regeneration. What he does have is a move he can do to slowly recover his health if you try to cheese him. He only do it if he goes back to his perch, which he will only do if you try to retreat from the fight by going down the stairs. He will never do that if you are actively fighting him. So, why would people go down the stairs? It's time to talk about his deadliest attack, his overhead fire breath attack. This is one of the most dangerous attacks in the entire Souls series. First of all, the damage is enormous and completely disproportionate to all his other fire breath attacks. A character with good fire defense can shrug off a direct hit from any of his other fire breath moves. But even on New Game with 1500 plus HP and really good fire defense, if you're in one of the arbitrary sweet spots of that attack, you get instant killed. But that's just the beginning. The really dangerous thing about the attack is that it can't be blocked, rolled through, parried, interrupted, or even run from in most positions. The total time from the first frame from crouching to jump into the air to damage being inflicted is 2 seconds. I've timed it and it is impossible to get from a standing star at the epicenter to safety. You also cannot use most walls as cover against it, even if they logically should work. Running down the stairs can help, but as I alluded to before, that can prematurely end the fight, making him fly back to his perch and start regenerating. Which, if you're on a weak character on New Game Plus 6, is basically game over for you. Or at least back to square one. The only other cover I've found that works is to run around the corner of the bonfire room, but that has its own problems which I'll discuss at the proper time. There is only one other countermeasure. An asinine, an illogical hole in the hitbox. If you're right near the wall and near where his feet will be when he lands, even though you're clearly engulfed in intense flames, you'll just take no damage. 10 of the 10 work on the hitboxes there. One thing to watch out for though, if you're near the back of his foot, when he lands you'll take some damage. So stay near the sharp talons at the front. Those are apparently the safe part of his foot. Again, excellent work on the hitboxes there. Anyway, the upshot is that if he ever begins that attack, you instantly lose your no-hit run unless you were close to either 1, the stairs, 2, the bonfire room, or 3, his feet. So, just like you should always know where the fire escapes of your building are, you should always know which of those three you're closest to and be ready to make a break for them. So, let's talk about fire prevention. The key is that he will never use that attack if you are in front of his face when he's deciding what move to do. So always get back to being in front of his head before he picks his next move. He has many other attacks that he can do from the front. Let's talk about those. First of all, the physical ones. He has two foot stomp attacks. Those have considerable reach, especially the one with his left foot. It's worth noting two things about that attack. First of all, depending on when it hits you, you can ignore your shield block if you tried to block it. And two, more importantly, unlike most attacks, you shouldn't try to roll through it. If you do that, the problem is the foot actually pushes you along with it until you run the iframes and then take damage. Kind of like Bed of Chaos' hand swipe attacks. I'd say it's best to run or roll away from this attack. And if you're already toward his head to begin with, which is where you want to be, that gives you tons of warning and even puts you where you want to be for his next attack too, so it's really quite perfect. He also has a head slam attack. This has a fairly obvious tell and has pretty much no reach and no tracking, even less than you would expect. So. It's really quite trivial to get out of the way of this. Just roll toward his front, you'll be right back where you want to be. And if you're quick, you can even get a hit on him while you're doing that. Just don't get greedy. Also, note that sometimes his AI will bug after doing that attack and he'll just stare into space even if you hit him. If you don't want to cheese him, the way to unsuck him is to walk to the side of his head, and that will then get him to resume his usual AI. All the brain damage from constantly slamming his head into solid stone objects probably explains his bad AI. Deepest lore. Next up is his frontal fire breath attack. The tell for this one is fairly obvious. Flames start to lick from between his teeth, and he rears his head up and back. 
This covers an enormous area. If you're far away from him, you must take cover behind one of the wall sections. If you're close from though, this is what you've been waiting for. This is your chance to get some free hits on him. So walk or roll to the side of his head, and then hit him once or twice with whatever weapon you have on you. If your weapon doesn't have a good vertical swing, aim for the saggy low bit of his neck. The trick is getting back in front of him. Don't wait too long or he'll do his overhead doom breath attack. But don't jump the gun, or he'll end up killing you with the last few lingering gouts of flame from his mouth. He has another move that's more a maneuver than an attack, but still very dangerous. He can just jump back pretty much the whole length of the bridge, which then leaves you in range for multiple of his other follow-up fire breath attacks. This is particularly bad if you're toward the middle of the bridge, because then you might be in a situation where he can do his frontal fire breath attack from one side of you, or his fly across the entire bridge fire attack from the other side of you, forcing you to run back and forth for cover between two different walls. I also find that the walls can be inconsistent about cover from some of those attacks, except for one of the walls near the bonfire room. So I think that is the best wall to do your fighting near. Not only is it consistent about its cover, but also, and even better yet, if you're in that position, he can't, you know, as it were, flank you and do fire breath attacks from either side. He can only do his frontal fire breath attack or his over the bridge flying a fire attack from the same side. So the same wall works perfectly against both. It also means you don't need to run down the stairs and risk him just resetting the entire fight ever. Lastly, he has a tail whip attack, but you should never be in range of that. If you were in range of that, you were also in range to trigger him doing his overhead doom breath attack. Stay in front of him at all times. So with the attacks covered, let's talk about the steps of how to tackle this fight. First, run up the stairs of course and take cover behind the nearby wall. Then either wait 15 seconds, or if you're impatient, shoot a single arrow at him and he'll jump down and be aggroed immediately. Secondly, run past him and rush to the bonfire room. Optionally, if you have a strong weapon for whatever game mode you are on, you can try to sever his tail on the way. His tail takes extra damage, which is nice, and also, if you sever it, it staggers him for several seconds, which gives you time to keep running and get to the bonfire room in time. If your weapon is not strong enough, don't try to do this, just get to the bonfire room. He'll then usually do his overhead doom breath attack, but you have enough of a head start that you'll make it to cover. Then, the next tricky bit, get turned around fast into that end and run back and get in front of him before he does his next attack. So now we get into the third step, the main bulk of the fight. At this point, you want to just stay in front of him. If he does his head slam attack, just roll backward, hit him in the face if you want to once, and then wait for his next attack. If he does his frontal fire breath, run to the side of him, get a couple of free hits in, then run back in front of his face again. If he jumps back, take cover behind the wall and wait for him to approach you again. He might fire breath a few times, but he will come back to you eventually. And as he does, just run out in front of his head again and repeat the cycle. If he does his thousand yard stare, reliving traumatic memories of the great dragon hunts, just walk over to his ear and remind him that all his buddies' heads are hanging in the trophy room in Anna Rolando. That usually works. So, what can go wrong and spoil this rhythm? Well, one pitfall to avoid is dodging too far to the side of his frontal fire breath attack. That can leave you in a position where you can't get back in front of him safely in time and at risk of him doing his overhead doom breath attack. Similarly, you can have a problem where if you run back in front of him too slowly after he's jumped away from you, you are to the side of him and he does his overhead doom breath attack. If he ever does his overhead doom breath attack, what you must do is run pell-mell into the bonfire room and take cover behind the nearby wall. But you're still in deep trouble at this point. You have a very narrow window when that attack ends to run back out before he initiates his next attack. Otherwise, you get stuck in a loop where he will endlessly do his forward fire breath attack, which leaves no window whatsoever to get back to him ever again. Only way to unsuck yourself in that case is to walk over to the sunlight altar area, maybe shoot a single arrow at him, and then run back, hoping that breaks his rhythm. Sometimes that works, sometimes they'll just leave the battlefield entirely and have to restart the entire fight. It's best to avoid the situation entirely by just giving him no opportunity to do his overhead doom breath attack in the first place. So stay in front of his head. Anyway, that advice should be all you need to tackle this foe no matter how weak your character may be or what challenge you may be under. Alright class, today we have a special guest, Dragon Slayer Ornstein, here to show us some of his famous dragon slaying techniques and demonstrate how to slay this dragon with weak weapons on New Game Plus 6 without taking a single hit.
Thank you for that demonstration, Orenstein. I'm sure the artist formerly known as Gwyn's Firstborn is proud of you. Well, thank you for watching everyone, and happy dragon hunting. And a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. Illusory Thunder, Master Knight DH, Jackie, Advance Warrior, Gregory, William Wakefield, Kenny Boggs, Danny Hall, and Jeffrey Morse. Have a great day, everyone.